All right, we have Alan Lazard joining us. Alan, how you doing? Can you hear me just fine? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, let's, <laughs> let's go with our first question. Um, Rachel Hopmeyer, NBC 26, go ahead. Thanks, Nate. Alan, can you hear me? I can. All right, let's talk about that crazy bobble because the slow-mo was nuts on your second touchdown. Were you worried it wasn't going to be ruled a catch, and how did you recover so well? No, I, I wasn't worried that it would be um, ruled incompletion at all because I knew once I like kind of bobbled it or fumbled it or whatever, it was well after the fact that I'd already caught it, tucked it, rolled, and did some more after that. So um, I just wanted to ensure if they were to try to use it against me, that's why I kind of caught the ball towards the end. Um, just to make sure, just to give them more peace of mind and confirming that it's a touchdown. It was a great throw. Great throw. All right. <laughs> was that meant for me? Sorry, my bad, Alan. No, you're good. Uh, so you talked about, you know, you guys just playing in week 18 and carrying that momentum. So after playing in today's game, what momentum are you guys carrying into the playoffs? Um, yeah, obviously we wish we would have came away with the W. Um, team fought very hard towards the end. Yeah, I give credit to the Lions to be able to finish it out and everything. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing was just for us to get, go out there and just to be able to play in rhythm. You know, I think you did a great job the first half coming out there with the starters um, and be able to kind of put some points up on the board. Um, just get into that rhythm, get into, you know, the play calling, you know, it's going to be another two weeks before we play a game again. So if we didn't play today, it would have been three weeks. And I don't think anyone really wants to do that. So, um, you know, like I said, we wish we would have came away with the W, but, you know, we were able to still be able to get some good film out there and uh, do some stuff we can teach off of. All right, next up, Wes Hodkowitz, Packers.com. Go ahead, Wes. Hey, Alan, uh, just for you individually, five catches, 75 yards, obviously the two touchdowns as we talked about. Just how do you feel about where you're at right now going into the playoffs and kind of this run you've been on for the past month? I feel good. I feel good. You know, I feel like I'm in a really good mental space um, physically as well. Um, and just, you know, having a good uh, intuition, you know, when it comes to playing the game. And just feeling it out, knowing what Aaron's thinking. Um, you know, I think I got to give a lot of credit to these coaches, um, Coach Vrabel and uh, Hackett, as well as other guys as well. But those two guys specifically have done a great job throughout this entire year, but I really just honed in on their teachings, um, you know, on, on what they've uh, done to prepare us for these games and everything. So I've just really been honing in on my notes, you know, the film, the details and the routes, and, you know, just been working on that, that chemistry and connection with Aaron. And you know, it's obviously been working out very well lately. All right, next up, we're going to go to Steve from the Associated Press. Steve, go ahead. We talked about wanting to have the offense in rhythm going into the playoffs. In that regard, how nice was it offensively for y'all to have David and Josh back for at least a little bit before, rather than make them making their returns in the postseason? Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. You know, I went up to both of them. I was just gave them a hug and said, uh, you know, it's happy to see you out here again. Um, not just, you know, from the standpoint of just them being fantastic players. You know, I think, you know, our old line has done a great job with those guys but being out um, periodically throughout this year and everything. But just having those guys out there, the leadership that they bring, especially David, um, just the energy that they bring to the huddle and everything. Just, you know, when you see those guys and you look around and, you know, I think that's what's so great about here with the Packers is that, you know, you get in the huddle and you see 10 other guys that you can fully trust that you know they're going to do the job, which just makes you doing your job a lot, a lot more simple. You know, you're not thinking about, well, what happens if he, if he loses his one-on-one -on -one and, you know, I got I to gotta speed up my route or something to get more open so we can convert this third down. But when, you, when you're not worried about the, the outside noise and you just focus on yourself, um, you know, it, it leads to more successful plays. It leads to longer drives. It leads to points. And I think that's something that we do very great and very well here in Green Bay. All right. Next up, we're going with Kyle Malzahn, WFRV-TV. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Alan, Aaron has said you guys have called on him a lot this season after the game. Did he deliver a post-game speech, or what was the message um, after the game heading into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, his, his knuckle is pretty simple and plain. I mean, it's just we know what's at stake. We know, you know, these past two years we've come up one game short of, you know, our ultimate goal. So um, the big message is, you know, what, what are you willing to – what what are you willing to uh, – to do to put yourself in a, in a better position to help this team out you know are you are you sacrificing your time are you 
you know, putting the right efforts into your film and the practice and your recovery, and you get and making sure you're staying on your sleep. Um, you know, are are you are you more focused on what's going on on social media and stuff like that? So, um, you know, it's very simple, very plain, nothing nothing out of the ordinary for for the message that he delivered. But I think it was just you know, kind of putting the cap on it of just you know of everybody be on the same page going uh, forward for this playoffs. All right, next up, we're going to go to Hunter Baumgart of WJJQ. Go ahead, Hunter. Hey, Alan, you got me? Yep. So uh, you just mentioned your connection with Aaron a couple minutes ago. How much has that connection between you and Aaron grown throughout this season? Tremendously. Tremendously, I think, you know. Um, obviously, going back to, like, the month of November, um, just how funky it was, him being gone a game, I was gone a game. Um, you know, I got hurt a for a few for a for a week and stuff so um i think we just done a great job and of just you know constantly grinding at it constantly trying to improve and, and me just focusing on my routes focusing on my techniques and just more so just trusting my training and just letting him do his job i think that's just been uh, the biggest thing that's helped help him be successful these past month or so of just you know not trying to do too much and just focus on my game all right, next we're going to uh, Rachel Hotmeyer again. Go ahead, Rachel. Alan, what did you see out of Jordan in the second half, and how valuable do you think it is that he gets this much time in a game? Huge, huge. You know, I told him um, right before he made the, the second to last drive, I was just like, you know, go go own the huddle. Go instill some confidence and some some positive energy into those guys and um, make, it, make it be well known that – that you guys are going to finish the drive off with a touchdown. And to see the way that he's able to play, to see him be able to kind of control the game in his last, uh, the last quarter or so. Um, obviously, you know, didn't end the way that we wanted it to, but, you know, mistakes happens all the time. And just because it happened at the end, it's going to be, um, you know, pointed out a little bit more. But, um, I mean, I thought he did a great job. And he, he's, he's subtly been growing this entire year. And obviously, he doesn't get the, the snaps with Aaron. Um, being up and everything, but you know he, he's he's grown tremendously throughout practice, um, week in and week out. So I'm very proud of him. All right, next we're going back to Wes Packers.com. Go ahead, Wes. Alan, I don't know if you got a good look at Josiah's uh, that tight end screen he took for 62, but uh, <laughs> what was sort of your reaction to it if you did? And just overall, though, what what have you kind of seen from him here uh, coming on here? You know, especially without having Robert. Yeah, yeah, I was screaming. I was screaming. I had a pretty good view of it. Um, Lucas Patrick, I gave a shout out to him. He, he threw an amazing block, knocked out two guys. Just I was able to sneak inside of him, um, break off one tackle. And for him to be able to, that might have been, you know, our longest touchdown of the season. Um, Wes, I'm, I'm sure you, you would know better than me, but um, for him to be able to make that play, regardless of what week it is, what team we're playing against, like it's still the NFL and there's still very much a super talented guys out there. So um, that, was, that was a huge play for him. And, you know, I think it was a huge confidence boost for him. He's obviously, um, you know, I think last week he, he missed a pass that, you know, you probably wish he would have got back and here and there. Um, you know, I think that's just – it's just part of the subtle improvements that, that it takes to keep on growing. And, you know, he's done a great job throughout this entire year, but just growing every single day, every single game. Um, and you, you can see it. You can see it the way that he prepares, the way that he plays, and he, and he plays his heart out all the time. And, you know, I think that's what we as, as teammates, you know, respect the most out of him just how hard he goes out there, how much he cares, how much he loves us. All right, it, Alan, we're going to finish it up with Lily from Fox 6 in Milwaukee. Go ahead, Lily. Hey, Alan, when you see uh, Devontae break Jordy Nelson's single season team record today and you're looking at all the milestones that he's passing, you know, when, do you look at Tay's marks and think, you know, I'm going to try to beat you one day. I'm going to try to get these marks myself one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's no secret that, that he's the person I'm chasing. And in a sense, you know, I feel like if you're in the NFL and you play wide receiver, if you aren't chasing Devontae Adams, then you're doing something wrong because of the production he's had over the years, especially this year. Um, and, and going back to last year as well, you know, just the, the distance he's been able to separate um, from, from him and, you know, the rest of the pack over these past two seasons is historical in, in my eyes. And, um, you know, just, just being able to work with him every single day, very grateful. Um, for his presence, obviously to have him as a teammate, um, make an incredible place throughout the year and everything, but his leadership and, and his presence in the locker room and our wide receiver room is huge. And he definitely makes, you know, he's definitely a huge part of the reason why we have success here. So 
for him to achieve that um, that accomplishment, I know it's, it, it was huge for him. You know, he first came in here and he, and he was looking at Jordy the same way I'm looking at him in a sense. So, I mean, that's obviously down the road um, for me, for those type of things. But, you know, he's, he's a person I'm chasing every single day. I'm watching him off the line, watching an individual, um, you know, no matter what the drills are, you know, I'm trying to take as much as I can from him to be able to be half as good as him. Because if I'm half as good as him, I know I'll still be in this league for a very long time. All right, Alan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. See you. Uh, next up for us, uh, thank you for joining us, Aaron. I hope hey, you thanks. can hear me. Yeah, man. You should see the room I'm in right now. That's incredible. <laughs> I can only imagine. All right, let's um, let's get it started. We'll uh, start off with Wes Hodkowitz, Packers.com. Go ahead, Wes. Aaron, um, hey, you know, this journey that Dave's been on, you know, for the last 12 months, I was just wondering what that, that meant to you tonight, going back on the huddle and, and seeing 69 out there with you. Oh, man, that's been – it's been a long year for uh, for him, and I'm just so proud of him to get back out there. You know, we had a conversation on Wednesday, and uh, I don't think he was thinking about playing. And I just kind of floated the idea and said, "Hey, uh, you know, what if you come out and and play a couple of series on a Sunday?" For whatever reason, that kind of maybe slightly adjusted course corrected his uh, you know what he wanted to do, but. I'm so proud of him. Um, he's been through so much, and obviously being really close to him and getting to have a lot of conversations uh, with them, it's been tough, you know, mentally, which is understandable. You know, to you know, think you're coming back, you know, week seven, maybe week eight, and to have a setback, another surgery, and then you know, it's been tough on him. But I'm I'm so proud of him. Uh, I thought you know, it seemed like he was fantastic. But I'm just really happy for him, the person. He's a great person. You know, he makes our team better. Obviously, he's an incredible player. But you know, to celebrate uh, him and his happiness today is is pretty special. And nothing like running out there and seeing the big giraffe heading out as well. All right. Next up, Rachel Hopmeyer, NBC 26. Go ahead, Rachel. Aaron, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, how much play calling did you get when you put the headset on? What was it like, you know, being in that role? Uh, zero. Uh, just sometimes, like in the preseason, I'll do that if uh, if it seems like I need to calm somebody down. So I enjoy getting on. I didn't want to get on until the fourth quarter and help Matt out, you know, with some of the two-minute calls or ideas. But I love being on the headset. It's a fun group of coaches. And obviously, you know, we're playing to win, but all right, with the one seed locked up, it was maybe a, a little less tense than it usually is uh, in a close game like that. All right, next up, Hunter Baumgart, WJJQ. Go ahead, Hunter. Yeah, Aaron, just a quick question about the toe. Is that going to be a non-issue as you go into the playoffs? You know, you're able to practice a couple of times this week and, and obviously opted to play today because, you know, instead of getting two weeks of rest on it, was it able to pretty much heal how you wanted it to over these last six or so weeks? I don't know about how I wanted to. I mean, I didn't want to have any setbacks, and I had multiple setbacks uh, throughout the uh, six, seven weeks. But uh, I feel good. Uh, so made it out again uh, okay. We'll probably do a scan, uh, x-ray uh, next couple of days, see where it's at. But I feel like it's going to be a non-issue moving forward. All right, next up, Marcus Eversall, WDUZ. Go ahead, Marcus. Hey, Aaron, you got me? So – you guys obviously had the number one seed and home field last year, but now obviously you'll be at Lambeau all the way to the Super Bowl. Last year with limited fans, how much are you looking forward to having the one seed with a full capacity? And really, how big a difference do you think having a full house of fans makes with having that number one seed? I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, we've played in some tough environments on the road in the playoffs over the years, and um, when the when the crowd is rocking and, and and yelling and standing up, it's tough. You know, it makes it really hard on the opposing team's offense for uh, you know uh, verbal communication, cadence, and different things. So I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to having a full crowd, uh, that good old Green Bay weather. Uh, it's been an advantage for us for a long time, and I think it'll be an advantage having 78,000 instead of 7,800 like we did last year. 
All right, next up, Kyle Melzon, WFRV TV. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Aaron. In your second year working with Jordan Love in that quarterback room, I'm curious as to how your guys' relationship has grown the most this season. Oh, you know what? I think as, a, as an older player, you just you create opportunities for young guys to feel comfortable. I think that's the best thing you can do from a leadership standpoint, from a, an older teammate standpoint. So that's what I've tried to do in the quarterback room, create an environment that's fun, that's laid back, that's carefree, that in, involves a lot of communication and conversation about football and non-football stuff. And that's what I've tried to do with uh, all my rooms, and especially as a, really the age difference is, has crept up over the last few years. Just, just create a room that, that uh, is really fun and comfortable and allows guys to be themselves. And I've seen Jordan's personality, you know, continue to come out and, and as he settles into the NFL and professional life and, and obviously having his sweetie back has is, is, is definitely made a difference, I think, uh, from just a pure enjoyment standard. Um, you know, last year in COVID, that wasn't the case. So it's been, you know, it's been a lot of fun. He's a great kid. He really is. He, he cares about it. He works his butt off. He asks good questions. And uh, he's got a great uh, wry sense of humor. And he's a quiet, quiet kid, but I respect that. I was a quiet kid as a young player, too. So I really enjoy his personality. I enjoy his friendship. And uh, we have a lot of fun together. And I'm, and I'm proud of the way he played today. All right. Next up, Adriana Torres, Fox 11. Go ahead. Hello. Um, a bunch of players talked this week just about getting a win today would bring a lot of momentum into the playoffs. Obviously, you guys didn't get that done, but with it being close, did, did you feel like you got some momentum heading into uh, the bye weekend in the playoffs? Look, we, we already locked up the one seed, so the win, the win was uh, obviously would be nice, but most important thing was get out there. You know, I really want to get, we talked about momentum, that's important. I want to get out there with, with Dave and Josh. You know, that was my main, main focus. Obviously, you want to get Devontae, uh, you know, his, his record. Um, but, but, you know, get some rhythm within the offense. Get some rhythm with those two guys, especially. We got to figure out what our best five is and what our healthiest five is. And obviously, Billy's coming back from an injury. Uh, Royce has played a ton of football for us. Lucas played a ton of football for us. So we got to figure out what our best five is. And, you know, it's nice to see. Uh, Dave out there at left tackle and Josh in there at center and then uh, Lucas moving back to center in the second half and Royce going back in right guard. I think we have a, uh, a lot of depth, which is which is a good thing to have. And we'll see what Billy's status is moving forward for the playoffs. But um, I like where we're at offensively up front. And I think that was what today was most about. All right, next up, Wes, Packers.com. Go ahead, Wes. Aaron, you just kind of touched on a little bit, but obviously as special as that 14 season was for Jordy, what, what did you think of what Devontae did this year and for him to be able to leave this season with both the receptions and the receiving yards records? Yeah, it's special. I mean, he's a special, special player. He's, he's so unique in his skill set and his understanding of coverages and his, his hands and his route running. And I've talked about all that, but, but I've seen a lot from the person this year. Is, is he's really settled into his role as a leader on the football team, leader in his room. And I love seeing that. And he got great examples as a young player to play behind and play with uh, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, and James Jones, great leaders for us, great players, kind of saw what it looked like. And then he's just, you know, paid his dues and become a star and become a superstar and become a generational star. Uh, and, and as he's ascended each level, uh, the, the leadership has accompanied that. And that's, as a fellow leader, that's what you'd love to see. You'd love to see guys uh, willing to speak up at the right time, take control of their room, hold people accountable, hold themselves to an incredibly high standard uh, every single day of practice. Um, he deserves it. That, that's why I told him at halftime. I said, he really deserves this uh, because of the way he conducts himself, the way he plays, his incredible talent uh, and, and drive. And I'm just so fortunate to be able to be a part of it. All right. Next up, we go to Lily Zhao, Fox 6, Milwaukee. Go ahead, Lily. Hey, Aaron. Just going off that, you know, Alan Lazard was talking about, you know, Devontae's the guy he's, ch he's chasing in the wide receiver room. You've been with him his entire career. Do you see him kind of on that trajectory to get to where Tay is eventually one day? Uh, I love Alan. Alan's a fantastic player. Does so much, much for us. Uh, I'm going to reserve 
that judgment out of respect for Devontae. I wouldn't say that about uh, Devontae comparing the majority as a young player. I just think that uh, I love where Allen's at. I love how he's uh, really played well since the LA game, made a bunch of you know smart plays, uh, great catches, contested catches. Um, but Devontae is kind of in a category by himself. So I'm gonna leave him there and it's no disrespect to anybody else, but he's earned uh, that distinction in that category all by himself. Next up, Tom Silverstein, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Go ahead, Tom. Here, and I assume in a, you know, quote unquote, meaningless game, the focus can sometimes drift or there could be a, a possibility of that occurring. How did you think you guys, you guys handled it during the week and during the game? Yeah, I mean, I think we had a nice week of practice. I think the energy level was a little bit lower than than maybe the standard we played at the last few weeks. I'm not sure if that was, you know, not having a few of our guys or just the understanding that certain guys weren't going to play a whole lot. But I didn't feel like uh, energetically we uh, were, were maybe as, uh, you know, as, as hyped or as focused as we usually are. Um, I felt like we were a little bit lethargic uh, at times on offense. I'm um, kind of getting back to the huddle, getting out of the huddle. So that's something that, uh, you know, we just got to be aware of. But I also think we're a little hypersensitive at this point because we knew, you know, I was going to play a half, Josh didn't play a half, Dave was going to play 20, 25 plays ish. And so we knew there was kind of an end to today's uh, start earlier than the 60 minutes. So. Um, I don't put a whole lot of uh, worry or uh, weight into a lot of that stuff. Like I said earlier, the most important thing today was for me in my mind was to get out there with Josh and for him to feel the tempo and to get out there with Dave and get him comfortable, feeling good about um, being able to play a, a whole game come divisional round. All right. Next up, Cal Melzon, WFRV TV. Go ahead, Cal. Aaron, you've been called on a lot uh, this season post-game, and I asked Lazard this just a little bit ago, and he kind of gave me a gist, but from your words, what was your post-game message to the guys in the locker room as you guys head into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it wasn't anything real, real special. Uh, just kind of gave him a question to, to think about this week during the bye week, um, revolving around um, mindset and habits, and focus, um, you know, the fact is it's win or go home at this point. We have uh, a little over a month left of the season. And let's make sure we're kind of thinking about the right things, doing the right things, focused uh, on, on the end goal. The coach is always going to keep you, you know, as, as blinded as possible, kind of with a narrow focus. But I do believe in the power of manifestation and the power of speaking things into existence. And I encourage the guys all the time to, to start dreaming about what, what it would feel like to, uh, to be on that stage. Um, I don't think that's overlooking the opponent. I just think that's a part of um, you know, the visualization process is to picture yourself in those situations, uh, you know, playing in the Super Bowl, and that's the focus every single year. And now it's right in front of us. We've got a home field advantage, got a week off, and uh, I think that needs to be on the guy's mind moving forward. All right. And lastly, we will finish up with Tom Silverstein of Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Aaron, so in the early going, you passed quite a bit. And I don't know if you were worried about the Lions bringing it or not, but it looked like they, they stayed in pretty much four-man rushes a lot of the time. Were you – really wanting to pass the ball for the sake of Dave and, and Josh as much as anything? I think so. Yeah, I think that was important. I mean, Dave, I just wanted, I think Matt did as well. I wanted to get him in some kick sets and get him feeling good about bull rushes and speed rushes and inside moves and just get him comfortable as much as anything. Um, they, they did bring a, a couple pressures, but yeah, it was a lot of too high coverages and We've done a good job, you know, figuring out certain certain concepts we like and that stuff. But I think as much as anything, the, the way the first half went, for the most part, we had a couple uh, mental errors. But for the most part, it was we wanted to be aggressive throwing the ball and and uh, take some shots down the field, and get the get Dave out there for you know 25 snaps or so, and and get Josh the first half to, to get his start to get his win back. But um, I, I like I like what we accomplished. 
It wasn't too dissimilar to the first game, uh, game two, week two against them. You know, they were at 17, 14 and a half, I believe, and we ended up leading 35, 17. So it felt very similar to that. And uh, we feel good about uh, offensively where we're at and what we accomplished today. All right. Thank you, Aaron. That is all we have time for. Have a good thank trip. You.